Hi folks, Rory at Clodden Painting Studio here. Um, we're going to look at painting a Perry Plastic French Hussar. And we're going to go a bit more uh, in-depth than have been on some of the previous videos. Um, we're going to use this as an example of using a bit of pre-shading and glazes. And to start that off, I gave this an undercoat with black um, and then came side on with a grey undercoat and then from above with some uh, Citadel Wraithbone. Um, and that's helped to find some of the, the light and dark areas. And we're going to further enhance this. I'm going to use a um, bit of um, Wraithbone out the pot along with some um, off-white um, to sort of really intensify some of the, the lighter areas. Um, we'll also probably use a little bit of um, dark tone wash uh, from the Army Painter um, just to add a bit of shading in and around some of the, the braid as well. Um, come back to you once I've got the um, extra highlighting and shadows applied. So back after boosting the contrast between light and dark there. Um, we are taking it in a bit of an extreme direction. Um, but this is all to help the colours that are going to go down over the top. Um, and the great thing about this technique is that you can essentially do this stage and then any model um, with any colour scheme you will be able to apply that colour over the top and it's going to generate the highlights and the shadows for you. Um, just as sort of a, a little example of what I have been doing, I've just got some pure off-white um, on the brush here. So the sort of the high edges in the folds in the jacket, we tackled them. Uh, we've added some onto some of the braid work as well. Um, <clears throat> sat a bit on top of the, the shoulders here. And if we, if we look around and sort of compare the, the front of the model, um, you know, we, we've got a, a much darker shadow under the arm there. And even though we're applying uh, one blue to this later because it's going to be the first Hussars. Um, it's going to look different on those areas. We've, we've got the off-white um, and the mid-tones and then the, the black shadow as well. Um, the dark tone I used to define some of the shadows. Um, just mix that with a little bit of uh, Vallejo glaze medium um, and that will allow it to flow a bit better into some of these um, spaces between some of the braid work and the, the folds so just as an example there what we've been doing with that um, I have put more of that dark tone, dark tone over the fur on the police which is the name for this jacket draped over the shoulder um, and around the, the shackle as well um, they are going to be black so it's just a simple way to speed up that process of painting black later and we'll add just a little bit more of this dark tone onto the uh, knot work. Um, and then when this is dry, we're going to get out some blue and apply that to the model. So I've got some Army Painter Crystal Blue. And we're just going to apply this over practically everything. Um, Some for breeches, jacket, and police. So I have thinned this with a bit of uh, Vallejo glaze medium um, so that it's quite runny. Um, it's difficult to sort of prescribe for each paint how much glaze medium you need. Um, they're all bit thicker out the bottle than um, uh, the thickness out the bottle always is, is different so you'll get a feel for um, what's a, a good mix um, it takes longer to dry and it will probably need a couple of coats so we'll return um, when we've got that applied and dry a couple of coats of crystal blue applied I think we can up the highlighting even further so I've added a bit of void shield blue to the crystal blue um, because this is still a bit wet this mixture 
and we're going to get a bit of surface blending with the uh, crystal loop. We've got a little bit of a delay in the paint setting when you've used the um, glaze medium. And that means we can do a little bit of wet blending. So we're getting a, a bit of a mix of the layers of paint as we apply this new layer on top. We'll keep working in a bit more of the Void Shield Blue. Might add some blue tone wash to the recesses as well. While the blue continues to dry, um, I've got myself a bit of red, with some contrast, uh, Blood Angels red. Um, we've got the cuffs to do. Uh, and around the waist of the Hussar here, um, our band has an interlaced um, red and white pattern. So just vertical bars of red broken up with white going around the middle and um, the border of the saber tash um, red with a bit of white piping just where red meets blue uh, saber tash is the name given to the shield thing um, that hangs from the waist alongside the saber sheath Okay, so I'll do the cuffs and we'll come back and tidy that all up. I'd like to enhance the black um, of the boots. One downside perhaps of having the overhead spray is that the top of the boots are going to end up um, white. So it may take a couple of coats of contrast black Templar to get a uniform black there. Um, as well as the leather of the boots and the stirrups. Um, round the edge of the police said earlier that's black so the black Templar is just going to help to further define the shade and the recesses there. Um, the shako as well we need to enhance the black there. Uh, the plume is black and on the reverse of the model i um, got some more fur on the cuffs of the uh, police and the back of the boots. Um, I may well at this point do the uh, sheath in a black as well um, and also the barrel of the carbine and that's because um, a metallic paint is going to look better over a darker colour. This goes for the sabre itself as well. A little bit of work on the skin. I have some Ari Painter tanned flesh. The work we've done already um, to highlight the um, nose and, and cheekbones. I mean, we just get a little bit of contrast working its way in with this first base layer. It may require some highlighting or bit shading conversely just to really push the contrast. Well, we'll see how that looks once it's dry. Um, after the flesh is done I will get some uh, coat to arms hairy brown um, which I'll use for both hair and moustache um, but also for the first layer on the um, carbine stock as well. I'm going to push those highlights on the flesh I've decided. I think there is a bit of shading um, in between the fingers um, from the, the pre-shading we did before. Um, I think the face could do with some more definition and I will pick out the, the knuckles on the hands as well. So I've got a bit of Army Painter Barbarian flesh to do so. And I might even finish up with Corpse Pale just to really take that highlight to the 
the highest possible level. Um, it can be a good trick to use a bit of flesh wash afterwards to knock things back if you feel a flesh highlight has gone too far. It will just help blend things together. Um, the hair I will highlight with some um, snake bite leather. Now that's the old snake bite leather by Games Workshop, not the contrast paint. Um, Vallejo light brown would be a similar colour. Um, you can see, <clears throat> hopefully, on the um, wooden stock here that where we had the white um, or off white uh, base coat layer, um, the wood looks a lot brighter there than it does down um, the bottom where we've got the um, just the black undercoat. Um, and that looks natural. There's more light up here. Um, we may put a bit of wood grain in there um, with a light brown as well. Um, I did also um, put some of the hairy brown on the hilt of uh, the sabre. Um, there's a bit of highlighting to do to the red. I'm going to get some Vallejo Scarlet. Um, we'll get all these highlights finished off on the, the skin and the hair and the scarlet. We'll come back. So after doing some highlights, um, I've been back to my off-white to really start... Um, defining the the white um, lace and cords that's on this model. Um, there's quite a lot of white piping as well. Um, so with Vallejo off-white, just continue the piping that's at the bottom of the jacket here. And um, just below that we do have a little bit of a belt um, which I picked out as well. Um, our cross strap um, belts to the sabre tash, um, these are all uh, white as well. And on the back we've got some um, white decor. And <clears throat> there's a little cord that wraps around the wrist that holds the sabre on. Um, again in white along with uh, the white piping of the cuff. Um, our cords on the shackle, um, again white. And of course on the police itself, uh, one of the most famous parts of the Hussar dress. Uh, we'll see if we can get this to, to focus on the cord there. Um, if you want to sort of really convince the, the casual observer that that is um, thread, um, it is a flat surface but there would be wraps um, of, of thread making up the cords um, I've got some Vallejo light grey and with my small brush I'm just going to do some diagonal marks and hopefully we can see where I've already put some that it gives the effect of there being thread here. Maybe a bit more obvious around the front here, um, where I have used some um, Barbarian Flesh over the top of the um, Scarlet and the Red there. Um, again, little diagonal lines. I'll do the grey on the white beside it. just to help sell the idea that we've got thread there. Now obviously across the table nobody's going to notice that um, but if somebody's picking up the model to look at really close uh, to the eye then that would be um, just a little uh, a little touch to really um, wow, their, uh, <laughs> wow the passers-by. Um, I've taken a bit of time um, also on the sabre tash to do some highlighting uh, there and there's a, a fine white line in there. Um, now source designs that I've seen do vary um, but I'm going to put a, a wreath in the centre of this one and we'll lay down some darker green um, in a sort of horseshoe shape and then we'll put some uh, individual leaves on with a lighter green. So we're back after a bit of work on the sabre tash. Um, I'll try and focus in on that. 
Um, so what I've done here is I've done a horseshoe shape in a uh, darker green that was angel green by Army Painter. And I have some Vallejo game color uh, sick green uh, that I've done in a couple of um, little strokes. Just trying to show that off here. Sort of perpendicular to the horseshoe. And that's just to give the impression of the leaves on this uh, wreath. Um, and there's a number one to designate the um, Hussar Regiment number there. Um, the black has had a initial highlight of some Vallejo Panzer Aces dark rubber. I um, now have some uh, modelled colour uh, London grey, just to add a couple of sort of dot highlights. If you feel that you've over highlighted black, you could always go back to dark Templar or uh, dark tone to bring that back. So I start concentrating on the upper surfaces. The fur pattern that's uh, on the police is nicely sculpted on. That will pick up quite easily. I've also done some uh, base colours for the metallics. Um, Vallejo, uh, sorry, uh, War Games Foundry uh, Blackened Barrel and uh, Vallejo Brass. We'll highlight the Blackened Barrel with some Foundry Gunmetal. Switching to a fairly battered old Army Painter character brush for this. The metallic paints will ruin brushes, so I tend to go for um, an older brush that's seen better days. some old Games Workshop Mithril Silver to do sort of final metallic highlights here. And then we've got some Vallejo Gold to highlight the brass. Um, the eyes I picked out with a little bit of off-white with my size zero brush. However, to do the pupils, um, I have a Staedtler pigment liner 0.05 millimeter tip, and we'll use this to do the pupils. is so much simpler than getting a brush in there and a lot more reliable um, than the paint running or being off target a little. Getting a bit of uh, wash in to finish the job. Applied some dark tone um, along the uh, back edge of the sabre. A um, bit of army painter mid brown um, around our gold areas. It's just going to help to enrich in the colour. The mid brown is very warm. 
perfect for brass or gold. And my black wash is some Army Painter Dark Tone. Okay, well the washes have dried. We've added a little bit of shading um, around some of the details um, on the brass. Bit of definition to the sword blade. And at that I think we're ready to um, about call the Hussar done. Quite a challenging paint. Um, I think if you wanted to, to make a, a shortcut for the, the first Hussars, um, you could uh, use Army Painter's Crystal Blue um, spray can, um, use some uh, light grey um, over the um, cords, give the black areas a coat of a dark grey, um, red cuffs, etc. And once you've got your base colours on, hit it all with a um, dark tone or other black wash, a um, bit of dry brushing white uh, to pick out the um, knot work and cords. If you've still got his horse to paint, we'll do that in another video. Um, and we'll see you soon. Um, if you've got any comments, of course, please feel welcome to leave them in the section below. And we'll get back to them as soon as we can. Cheers now. Bye-bye.